Are we going too far, too fast? Do we need more social distancing? There are now more than 1.1 million confirmed cases in the U.S. And you can see the dramatic shift over the last month. Just this weekend, there were more than 53,000 new cases, Robin. We've got to keep that in mind. So we're going to begin our coverage with our chief national affairs correspondent, Tom Yamas, tracking the latest all across the country. Good morning, Tom. Robin, good morning to you. We first told you about this field hospital in Central Park more than a month ago. In that time, they've treated more than 300 patients, but now they're going to start to wind down. And even though that is a very positive development, leaders here and across the country are reminding residents to follow those guidelines to stay safe and healthy. This morning, the president acknowledging his estimates on the death toll from COVID-19 were too low. Now saying up to 100,000 Americans could die from the virus, but defending his decision to shut down America to stop the spread. I used to say 65,000, and now I'm saying 80 or 90, and it goes up and it goes up rapidly. But it's still going to be, no matter how you look at it, at the very lower end of the plane if we did the shutdown. As coronavirus cases grow in the U.S. and half the country is set to ease restrictions this week, in some spots there are signs of reopening revolts. In Texas, which has seen four straight days of 1,000 plus new cases, a park ranger shoved into the water at Lake Austin. The ranger was asking the crowd to social distance. 25-year-old Brandon Hicks now charged with attempted assault on a public servant, a felon. In New York, the NYPD launching an internal investigation after this video surfaced showing the arrest of three individuals allegedly violating social distancing orders on Saturday. Over the weekend, the NYPD issuing around 100 summonses to people who violated guidelines to stay six feet apart. The danger is a bounce back, a boomerang, where the disease seems to be going away and then reasserts. Coast to coast, crowds gathering amid calls to social distance. Dr. Deborah Burks addressed the hundreds of demonstrators in Michigan last week, some armed with assault rifles, many not wearing masks. It's devastatingly worrisome to me personally because if they go home and infect their grandmother or their grandfather who has a comorbid condition and they have a serious or a very uh, or an unfortunate outcome, they will feel guilty for the rest of our lives. In some parts of the country, there is a growing debate over forcing people to wear masks in public. The governor of Ohio, where there were almost 4,000 new cases in the last week, also reversing his mandatory no mask, no service policy. It became clear to me that that was just a bridge too far, that people were, were not going to accept the government telling them what to do. Uh, and so we put out, you know, dozens and dozens of orders. Uh, that was one that it just went too far. And this morning, we're hearing from Americans who have just contracted the coronavirus. 28-year-old attorney Ashley Beck had symptoms dating back to mid-March, but couldn't get a test. After self-isolating, she felt better, but regressed, testing positive on Saturday. I think initially your heart just sinks. You wonder how many people you exposed to an illness that you had no idea you had. Michigan ER nurse Michael Palmer tested positive last week after feeling an intense burn in his chest and difficulty breathing. He believes he got it from a patient. Yeah, we've been reporting about these reopening rallies as well across the country. And this morning, the Department of Justice announcing an arrest in Colorado of an apparent organizer of one of these rallies near Denver. The FBI arresting this man. They say there were pipe bombs inside of his home. He has been charged with possession of a destructive device. He will be in court, George, later today.